guided missiles were one of Germany's most important technical achievements during World War II. Rockets and missiles have been a part of warfare since the late 1700s. Throughout the 19th century and into the early 20th, experimenters in many nations hoped to turn simple rockets into weapons, or, in some cases, to travel into outer space. At the outbreak of World War II, German experimenter Wernher von Braun and others had already been working toward rockets for space exploration. The German government began supporting rocket research in 1932, believing rockets could be used as weapons, and by 1941 German scientists were testing a missile called the Vergeltungswaffe 1, also known as the Vengeance 1. This missile, developed by engineer Robert Lissair, used a special kind of jet engine and relied on a mechanical type of autopilot for guidance. It was about 9 meters in length and weighed almost 2,300 kilograms. The V-1 was first launched in the summer of 1944, and over the next several months thousands of the missiles were directed toward London. The craft could be seen flying in at low altitudes from a distance of many miles, but they were so fast that anti-aircraft guns could rarely hit them. As they flew, the engines made a distinctive sound, leading the English to call them buzz bombs. Allied pilots gradually learned techniques for downing some of the missiles, and with the introduction of artillery shells equipped with the proximity fuse, a tiny radar set on an artillery shell, by late 1944, London was well protected from V-1 buzz bombs. There was no defense, however, from the Germans' other missile system, the V-2. This liquid-fueled rocket had a longer range and a greater payload than the V-1. In addition, it traveled much like a modern rocket ship, flying nearly straight up, reaching the border of space, then falling nearly straight down at speeds faster than sound. At the time, there was no way to stop such a missile or even detect its approach. The V-2 was based on von Braun's design and produced at a secret laboratory in Peenemünde and a factory near Nordhausen, both of which used concentration camp prisoners as workers. Beginning in September 1944, the Germans sent thousands of these missiles toward a variety of targets, but most were directed at Antwerp, Belgium and London. The V-1 and V-2 missiles were not very accurate, but they had a terrorizing effect on civilian populations, which was part of the German strategy. At the top of the rocket, we have the warhead which actually was only one-fifths of the rocket itself. Directly below that, was the navigation system, which included the gyroscope and compass. Next is the alcohol tank, this is the first ingredient to the fuel of the V2, both of which are stored in separate tanks. Just below that, is the liquid oxygen tank, this held the liquid oxygen. At the bottom of the rocket is a turbo pump that pumped the oxygen and alcohol into the combustion chamber. This produced the lift of the V2. The first successful V2 launched was on October 3, 1942 from Peenemünde on Germany's Baltic coast and traveled 118 miles. It proved extremely deadly in war and was the precursor to intercontinental ballistic missiles in the post-war era. The V-2 was unique in many ways. First, it was virtually impossible to intercept. Upon launching, the missile rises 6 miles, then it travels on an arched course cutting its own fuel to get the range and destination desired. At launch the V-2 propelled itself for up to 65 seconds on its own power, and a program motor controlled the pitch to the specified angle at engine shutdown, after which the rocket continued a ballistic free-fall trajectory. The rocket reached a height of 50 miles after shutting off the engine. Then, it tips over and falls on its target at 4,000 miles per hour. It hits the ground and then buries itself several feet before it explodes. Its launch pad was portable and could hit a target anywhere within 200 miles.
The German Reich surrendered on May 8, 1945, and with it, almost all of its technology was transferred over to the Allied powers, including the V-2. After the war, the V-2 rocket became the basis of space and missile programs in Great Britain, the United States, and the Soviet Union. The Allied countries grabbed rockets and rocket parts, shipping them home for study along with the German engineers who had designed them. Von Braun continued his research under contract to the US government, contributing to both Cold War missile systems and the space race. His counterparts in the Soviet Union did much the same thing. The V-2 missile was the world's first ballistic missile and the first object to go into space. It was designed in Nazi Germany, and assembled underground by concentration camp prisoners. Though more than 3,000 V-2s were launched, more people were killed building the rocket than those hit by it. The V-2 was not a successful weapon for Germany, however, it marked a breakthrough in technology that propelled the Soviet Union and US into a rivalry that can still be seen today. What General Vagon has called the Battle of France is over. The Battle of Britain is about to begin. Upon this battle depends the survival of Christian civilization. Upon it depends our own British life and the long continuity of our institutions and our empire. The whole fury and might of the enemy must very soon be turned on us. Hitler knows that he will have to break us in this island or lose the war. If we can stand up to him, all Europe may be free, and the life of the world may move forward into broad, sunlit uplands. But if we fail, then the whole world, including the United States, including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age, made more sinister and perhaps more protracted by the lights of perverted science. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duty. So bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its commonwealths last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. Thank you.